welcome to my channel. Awesome. Would you please introduce yourself? So my name is Sydney or Squidney Knits on Ravelry and Instagram and Etsy. And um, I've been a knitter for nine years and worked in yarn shops for over six. So I'm around it all the time. That's awesome. Yeah. So I actually first saw you at, I think it was Indian Tangle, and I just like loved your sweater. I actually took a picture of your back. Oh. <laughs> you were like talking to someone and I didn't, I mean, the way she presents herself, like you probably don't mind when people take your picture. No. Right? No, yeah. Because fine. she, you, you know, you have a certain look, you do your makeup, whatever. Like I could see someone like you being like comfortable with someone like me saying, hey, you look so awesome, can I take your picture? Is that, am I right? Yeah, yeah. But she was like talking, whatever, so I just took a picture of her sweater, which was <laughs> the rose vintage, do you know what that was called? Uh, trimmed with roses. Yeah. That's right, and I just loved it. And then, I can't remember how I found your Instagram, but I, something, maybe like one of the Ryan Beck hashtags. Ryan Beck. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, there she is, that's the girl that I really wanted to meet. And so, <laughs> that's how, why I'm here today. So I know absolutely nothing about you, which is awesome, which I love an interview like that. So I wore my Sydney red lipstick because I knew you'd be wearing it. Oh, so we're matching. Um, yeah, and when I used to have long hair, I tried for the victory rolls a lot. Though, I mean, you don't have technically a victory roll today, but I did try some experimentation with vintage hairstyles, <laughs> which is definitely you. So, okay, so let's talk about your knitting journey. Tell me anything you want to tell me from being born. Okay. To like now. Okay. I just want to know all the bullet points of the journey. Okay. Um, I learned when I was 14 during break in my freshman year of high school and I learned to knit specifically because I wanted to make Harry Potter scarves. Oh. Hardcore Harry Potter fan, still am, mm -hmm. but that was my main goal. So I knit scarves for a while. Like the Gryffindor stripes? Or like, yeah, all of them? I did all the houses, I did them for gifts, they were awful, atrocious. <laughs> I knit left-handed, I knit backwards, I twisted my stitches, I didn't know what yarn shops were. I was young, I was 14, mm -hmm. 15. Um, Who taught you to knit? Just a girl, uh, I think her name was Erica, and like, just a school? friend, yeah, just a friend at high school, mm -hmm. and then um, from there I moved high schools and my friend group at the new place also knitted. Awesome. So we started the dorkiest knitting group yes. in high school. We were called the Knitwits. Yes. And we planned our own homecoming dance called Yarn Coming. And, and um, we did like all these retreats together as much as you can when you're 16. It was just ridiculous. But we pushed each other to keep going further with mm -hmm. knitting and we did our first sweater knit along, mm -hmm. which mine was the Oh My Bear sweater by Tiny Owl Knits. If you're familiar with it, it is a giant intarsia bear head with a hood that has little bear ears. This was my first sweater. That's intense. I all those elements are so many elements for <laughs> so one many. project. Yes, and I didn't, I mean, I didn't really know what I was getting into. I just loved her patterns and I was like, I can make that. Yeah. I did. Do and you have it? I don't have it here. She, I know. Do it's, you have it on your reference page? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll screen grab it and put it right here. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Um, and so what year was this, I mean, you're young. What year were you in high school doing all this? So the knitting group was about 16 to 18. But like night, like two thousand what? Um, two thousand and ten ish. Okay. I'm twenty three. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you're a baby. Because I was thinking, when I was in high school, none of us were knitting. Like I don't even know if anything like that existed. We didn't have Ravelry. Yeah. We didn't have anything like that. Like yeah. no networking. Because like, I went to my parents and said I'd like an email address, and you're like, you're never getting an email address, <laughs> young lady. And I'm like. Okay, so so I can only imagine the sources that you had in high school compared to when I was in high school. It was just as Ravelry was kind of mm -hmm. getting gaining popularity. So during all of our breaks, we just went to the computer lab in the library and like printed out patterns. That's so awesome for hours. So dorky. I want to go back in time to be in your knitting friend group in high school. <laughs> okay, so yeah. did you succeed at the sweater though? Succeeded at the sweater, and around the same time, I got a job at my first yarn shop. So and where was this? This was in Eugene, Oregon. Uh -huh. So that's where I grew up and lived for most of my life. Um, 
that was... So like in high school you were working in a yarn shop? Yeah. I have, oh, up so to well. this point in my life, I have only ever worked at yarn shops. Like that's been your only job? Yep, I had one like short time where I was a tutor, but I was still working at the oh, yard. Bless you. That is such a blessing. Like you haven't waited tables. I know. I feel no so retail. I mean, I guess that's considered retail, but the best it's, kind of retail. Yeah, it's not the same. It's. What, I feel so. Yeah. What simple. was the name of the shop in Oregon? Soft Horizons Fiber. Wait, say it again. Soft Horizons. Oh, Soft Fiber. Horizons. And then, would you go after school, like straight to the shop, or how? What was your schedule like? I was usually working on the weekends and a little bit during the week as well. Mm -hmm. Just go after class at school. Um, that shop has been around for thirty-six years. Something crazy. It's in this old, haunted Victorian house. <laughs> I could tell you stories. Um, <laughs> and worked with a lot of really lovely people there. It was such a great dive into knitting mm -hmm. because now I was completely immersed in it four or five times a week. I was learning so many techniques from people who've worked there and have been knitting for 50 years and have been through the whole like progression of yarn trends and all of that. Um, so it was such a great learning curve, I guess. Yeah. So what happened after Eugene? Because now you're in Brooklyn. Now I'm in Brooklyn. So let's so, talk about that story. Yes. So from Eugene, I moved to Corvallis, Oregon to go to school. Um, I was there for four years and I worked at Stash. Um, and I probably can't talk about Stash very much because okay. I will cry. Oh. Um, <laughs> they are my family. Mm -hmm. They are still my family. Um, the best knitters you'll ever I'm already getting choked up. It's a great shop. I was there for a very long time and um, learned a lot there as well. And did you finish school? I finished school. What was your school and what did you study? I studied um, English and film and now I'm in New York and I'm going to school for film at the moment. So my focus is like 1920s to 1950s film history, American and German is what I mainly do. And it goes really nicely with knitting, so I always bring my knitting to the movie screenings and people are interested or just think I'm weird and I'm fine with both. <laughs> <laughs> what are your career goals with the film, with, the, with this um, schooling you're doing now? Um, I'm kind of exploring what I can do after getting a master's. Mm -hmm. For a long time I wanted to get a PhD and go on further into education. To teach about them. To teach. Mm -hmm. um, but my ultimate, ultimate dream would be working in some sort of costume or fashion archive. So working with the old material. Um, that's, that's where I see myself, is mm -hmm. working with the actual, like, tangible history. Because mm -hmm. I do that in my normal life mm -hmm. as well. Because mm -hmm. I see so. you're wearing vintage clothes all yes. the time. Yes, all the time. And so where do you shop for your clothes, and when did you, I mean, maybe this is too many questions at once, but when did you sort of shift into this being your look and your style? Was this in high school, or? It was in high school. Um, when I was 14, I got very interested in Marilyn Monroe and Audrey Hepburn. I actually had platinum blonde hair, believe it or not, um, and got into it when I was young, and then kind of moved through a couple different phases, but coming back to vintage, when I was 19, I started very specifically looking at vintage clothes, and probably by the time I'm 20 or 21, I'm in vintage every day. Mm -hmm. So, still in vintage every day. Um, and where do you find your vintage? What's the journey <laughs> like? So, back in Oregon, I had many places. I kind of knew the spots to go and made connections with people there. Williamsburg, Brooklyn is very different, <laughs> very different. Um, we just down my block, there are probably 19 vintage, vintage shops, but vintage in Williamsburg means the nineties right? <laughs> and it's like $60 for this like awful, like, you know, the eighties floor length cotton dresses that mm -hmm. are like not very stylish, at least. For me, there's a reason we don't have them anymore. Yes, <laughs> think that's a good way to say it. Um, but they are just ridiculously overpriced, and 
of all the shops that I've been to here, I've only seen two or three of them carry what I consider to be true vintage, mm -hmm. so 1960s-ish and before. Mm -hmm. So I got very frustrated and started anger shopping on eBay. And so I tend to do most of my stuff online now. Mm -hmm. Etsy has some amazing vintage stores. I have had the best luck on yes. Etsy. Yes. The coolest stuff. I love Etsy. Yes. Now when you get it, do you have to get it tailored? Uh, not typically. I, I tend to get items that are more under the as is or like need a little bit of TLC. <laughs> oh, sorry. Bless you. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Do they have the measurement? Like, will you look at the measurements yeah. too? Yes. That yes. helps, right? So, if they're right. If they're right. Mm -hmm. And that's the nice thing about vintage is that you just kind of keep your own measurements in mind. I don't actually know what my size is in mm -hmm. modern sizing. Yeah. I just go by measurement and I, I'm usually okay mm -hmm. by that. Will you buy something that looks vintage that was made this year? I used to do that. I haven't done that for the last year or so. And why? It's it's not so much about how I look on the outside, it's more about how I feel wearing something that is that old. Mm -hmm. So for me, the way that I've always connected to history is through clothing, through something that I can wear. Mm -hmm. And when I put on a 1950s dress, I can think about how much it's seen in 60 or 70 years mm -hmm. and who was wearing it and where did they wear it to and where has this item been mm -hmm. that's my absolute favorite part about vintage cool now when you knit though let's talk about like you have a sweater that you knit yes this this decade yes in the, the last several years yes <laughs> and so how does that work with your fashion rules and your style rules so i tend to only knit from vintage patterns Ooh, for myself. Good one. Yes. Except for the bear hoodie. Except for the bear hoodie. <laughs> so, so again, like no, let's... but we're to the now. Now that was like yes. when you were back in high I was school. Little, yeah, still figuring it out. Okay, <laughs> so vintage patterns. Yeah, I join. I tend to do vintage patterns. I also design a lot of my own. So this is my own design, just taking inspiration from that time. Um, with the thought that women in the '40s, in the '50s, would be doing. The same thing. Mm -hmm. People who are experienced knitters would probably just whip up a little bolero and be like, oh, wear this out. Well, I feel like I need to sit like I'm corseted also. Do you wear, can I ask you about your underpinnings? <laughs> yes. Do you wear vintage underpinnings? Yes. All Not, the time or just depending on what you're wearing? Depending on what I'm wearing. Okay. So I usually wear a slip. Mm -hmm. Like slips are integral to most of my outfits. Well, because also this fabric isn't always Vintage isn't always comfortable on the skin. Right. It needs an extra layer. Right. Uh, okay, um, so slip, yes, and? Typically wear a slip. I'm always wearing hosiery tights of yeah. that nature. Um, I don't tend to wear corsets um, or what are they called? Girdles. Girdles. Yeah, that's it. I don't tend to wear that because I'm in school a lot, so I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but it, it, I own them, so yeah. it just depends on the occasion, mm -hmm. depends on what I'm wearing, but yes. Yeah. I have certain bras and girdles that I wear, like with certain costumes, or yes. I'm not dedicated like you, but I have the occasional <laughs> vintage item situation, mm -hmm. so I have some underpinnings that help that look better, mm -hmm. you know? I was on set once, little side note, um, doing a print job, and I had a, like a 11 week old baby, and it was... A job for nursing clothes, mm -hmm. and both of us that were booked were named Chris, and so it was very getting very confusing. But I was so hot off the presses of having a baby that I was tightly girdled the entire oh set. My so God. my name was Gertie. They were being like, "Where's Gertie? We need Gertie down, <laughs> down on set right now." On your Ravelry page, do you have designs? Like, do I write them out? Yes. No. Oh, oh. I know. I know. Okay. Can I? Yes. I'll share the secret, every month. but I don't want to like get people's hopes up. Okay. I do want it to happen, but I don't know when. Well, you're um, busy. You're in school. I'm a busy girl. And you're working. But I like to do things. Yeah, yeah. I like to do a lot of things well, you're, all the time. She's 23, guys. She has time. <laughs> um, I do plan on releasing an entire like mini book of bolero patterns mm -hmm. that are inspired from 1940s and 1950s. Yeah. Um, bolero's 
became my obsession probably in April, April or May. Mm -hmm. um, and I've made seven or eight now. Sounds so cute. They're just, I mean, this is uh, This is Dream in Color Classy, actually. Oh, similar, similar to Tosh Vintage. Um, one thing that is rather annoying about vintage patterns is that they are basically all written for fingering weight. Oh. So, um, but this isn't fingering. Exactly. Okay. So I tend to knit vintage patterns and I tend to knit in fingering weight yarn, size two needles for whole garments. Oh, it takes forever. It takes forever. And I was really missing working with DK and worsted weight. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking what sort of vintage items that I will actually wear the finished product. Can I use these weights of yarn? And I thought about the Bolero. Yeah. So this only took 500 yards, like yeah. two skeins in mm -hmm. some cases and goes really fast. I can usually whip one up in like a week to two weeks. Mm -hmm. And they're really, like they wear so nice with dresses. Yeah, it's so cute with a dress. It works. Because so. you, oh, I always, that's when I get stopped because I'll have like this bulky sweater and I'm like, oh, I just can't whip over, I can't dress it up, you know, yeah. as well. Yeah. So now do you consider this yarn that you used vintage? I don't typically use hand dyed like kettle dyed looks, yarn. Doesn't this look? It is kettle dyed. Yes. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yes. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it looks to me like a modern. It looks yarn. like a modern yarn, mm -hmm. and that's difficult too because I love indie dyers. I love supporting like the little dyers, um, and I love the look of this sort of yarn. Mm -hmm. And I can show you my yarn stash later, but a lot of it does have this look that mm -hmm. I've just acquired. Um, but typically when I do like true vintage garments, I will work with a solid. Mm -hmm. Do you get vintage yarn on eBay or Etsy? I, I do have some, but it's really hard to find, yeah. especially to find the wool mm -hmm. vintage yarn. It's mostly acrylic. It's, yeah. it's mostly synthetic, like from the fifties on. Mm -hmm. And so it's not great. I have back at home home, um, 65 skeins of this like synthetic yarn with all these different colors and I want to do something with it but it's so icky and crunchy yeah that's it, yeah it's feeling not it's yeah. not good okay so so okay so I think I'm gonna make it a goal for you to yeah publish vintage vintage modern that's a good name you know <laughs> I, I I built a house of state and it's called an old new house because it's like looks old mm -hmm. or it looks like it's renovated but it's brand new yes yeah so that's sort of you know that that'd be great if you could do that for us yeah can you do that for us i'll i'll get to work <laughs> on that <laughs> um okay so now let's talk about okay i'm looking i want to keep talking i'm looking at your nails you're filing them like so specific is that like a 50s file it's they're um, like pointy they're yeah they're kind of curved and pointy yeah and they're not painted which i feel super normally about. More, normally do you paint them? always always red? yes dark red yeah, dark red for fall and winter. Yeah, and bright red for spring and summer. Yeah, why aren't they painted right now? Um, because of school, oh. and things are just busy. Oh, so, so I haven't. Have time yeah, to I just do haven't it. Have time. Okay, unfortunately. And then your hair is it always, is do you always set it like? I set it usually five out of seven days mm -hmm. of the week. Um, so this is like first day set mm -hmm. after being washed. It's very poofy. Yeah. Um. And usually a set for me can stay good for about four days uh -huh. if I keep curlers in every night. Uh -huh. And I use like spongy curlers. Yeah. And does it bother you to sleep with them? I used to have really vivid dreams that were creepy and weird, but my hair and my head has gotten used to it. Adjusted. So we're okay now. <laughs> my dreams awesome. are normal sometimes. Um, but yeah, so I'll usually do it most of the week and then there'll be one or two days where I don't and I'll do just an updo mm -hmm. or wear a headscarf. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I just love it. You're so committed to it, which is so amazing. <laughs> now, what do your parents think of this or your grandparents? Because they actually lived, probably your grandparents lived through this era. Yes. So my mom was born in 55 and I'm much older than you. So <laughs> what do they think of you sort of honoring this? era in this way? Um, that's, that's a good question. I think, particularly on my dad's side, I come from a very eccentric family, uh -huh. so it's not really weird uh -huh. that 
I dress differently. Um, my dad is like in a glam rock band. My brother is like a heavy metal guy. My sister does 1970s vintage. And my grandfather is what I would call a mountain man. Mm -hmm. So he like makes his own things out of hide and has yeah. a teepee, like. So cool. My family is eccentric, so. So your sister is committed to 70s like you are? Yes. This era? Now did you get this idea from her? No. She got it from you? Yes. Ah, nice. <laughs> She'll probably hate me for saying that. That's right. So she's okay. Um, That's cool. She, yeah. So she she typically does 1950s to 1970s, mm -hmm. and I do 1930s to 1950s mm -hmm. regularly. Mm -hmm. um, so typically, when I'm home, we will do 50s together. That's so cool. And like do our hair together, and we have like matching vintage nightgowns. Yeah. It's like stinking adorable. I love it's it. Cute. Okay, so. Um, and then what about your mom's side, or the other side of the family? It's... How do they feel there? It's not they just... Do. I don't really think it's a big deal to them. Again, like... I mean, it shouldn't be a big deal. I'm just wondering how... Yeah, I think, like, my siblings and I have always been kind of the eccentric mm -hmm. people in our family, mm -hmm. so they don't really think twice about it. Yeah, it's so cool. Now, speaking <laughs> of Williamsburg, I was doing a photo shoot the other day and wore this bright, crazy outfit, and my photographer was like, I love that you're walking around with turquoise tights and a pink dress and like everyone wears black Williamsburg. Do you feel that here walking around? I feel that Williamsburg is like the hipsters of Portland, Oregon came and made a colony here. So I see when I go walking a lot of black, a lot of flannel, a lot of um, circular glasses. Um, what like waxed mustaches yeah. and like very Hangle groomed yeah. men mm -hmm. um and then also a lot of overalls like that's been really trendy here interesting <laughs> so i see a lot of overalls and like white crop tops yeah that's like the williamsburg style because i was thinking williamsburg you could be or do anything it's yeah i usually i usually don't get like um i don't want to say harassed because i don't consider it harassment but like People don't really talk to me on the street here. Mm -hmm. When I get into the city, I'll have people say stuff to me. Mm -hmm. um, but in Williamsburg, they just don't. I think everybody is their special snowflake, and they mm -hmm. kind of do their own thing mm -hmm. and respect that other people do as well. Yeah, so cool. Okay, so let's talk more about knitting. Yeah. Let's get back to knitting. <laughs> Let me see some of your projects that you brought out to show me. Okay, so this one I brought just because it's hilarious. Um, this is from a 1942 pattern and it is knit in 12 pieces um, so, so this pieces. is a sweater that is not seamed okay so um, yes okay. so this, is this on twos this is like the, this is on this threes like and fours okay so wait let's, this is let's a sport weight it. yeah it's it's funky. Twelve pieces. So even... I've already here's one seam that I've done so far. Oh my gosh, look how pretty that is. And it has this is a collar, mm -hmm. and then this is a back piece that's also gonna get gathered up like that. Yeah, I pieces. love this gather. It's so pretty. Now you you did this in the seaming or the knitting? I did that in the seaming. That is so cute. So the reason that it's in so many pieces is that you have you have kind of like a peplum, I think, when it comes uh -huh. out like that. So it has this sort of peplum bottom, and then you have a knitted waistband that goes in the other direction. Yeah. So you have the ribbings going that yeah. way. Yeah, oh, that's fun. So that's why you have to bind off there. And then the second portions of it are all knit larger and then gathered. Oh, that's cool. And then yeah. it has like the two kind of sturdy pieces here, so you'll attach the gathering attach the gathering uh -huh. and then the collar will come out it's I can't wait to it's, see it <laughs> I can't either but I know that it's going to you're take so close hours though, but you're so I know yeah I when I did the um, Marshall cardigan by Brooklyn Tweed I cannot believe I wanted to put it together is it all in pieces yeah I mean it's front front back yeah and sleeves yeah but it had like a, an extra collar bit and yeah. it had um pockets but that was on size four needles. And the the Brooklyn Tweed yarn is it breaks easily. What were you using the loft or the shelter? Both. Oh, okay. So loft, I always remember, is the smaller. Yes. And most of it was loft. 
Yes. And so I had to just keep twisting. And I mean, they actually suggested using sock yarn to seam in the pattern. Yeah. But I didn't want to, and so I just kept. It just I think maybe that's why it took so long because I was just trying to make sure nothing was breaking mm -hmm. and everything was status quo. But this is gonna take. You're right. This is gonna take a long time. <laughs> It's gonna be so pretty though. I am I am really excited. And I love this color. This is gonna go well with right. my wardrobe. Yes. So I actually knit this up because I bought a dress that has this color blue. Yes. So that I could wear them together. I know. Sometimes we do crazy things. Like I, this sweater is way more expensive than that dress you bought. <laughs> I'm just saying, like when you buy the yarn like the fancy yarn. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But I need it for that one dress. Exactly. I love this. Really cool. Really pretty. Thank you. And what else? What's in your needles today? So, um, I am currently embarking on Knitmas. Um, oh, talk about Knitmas! It is... It's a thing. Knitmas. Um, yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> Knitmas. So, people that know me in real life... This um, is real life. This <laughs> is real life. Particularly, like, my knitter friends um, back at Stash understand how intense Knitmas is for me. Um, Knitmas begins November 1st. I do not start gift knitting until after Halloween because I am crazy. Last year I did 33 projects. How? One of them was a sweater. How? I don't know. I don't know how I do it. Um, oh. Typically the week before Christmas my knuckles get completely swollen and I'm up till two or three every night knitting still. Are you happy though? Um, yes. You... Stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stressed happy okay. because I love Christmas time. I love the holiday time. And I do love knitting for other people, which is why Me too. I do it in huge numbers. Um, it's, it's an adventure every year. There's usually something really strange getting knitted. Last year I did a swimsuit out of uh, Madeline Tosh. Um, I have done like a needle felted creature of the black lagoon head that was propped up on like a, a board for the wall. Uh, Who was that for? My brother. <laughs> no, wait, do you, do you make your list? When do you, when do you decide? The knitmas list? Like explain the process. Cause okay. Like, yeah. So, um. Cause I, like you don't start till November 1st. Do you plan before? Yes. Okay. I do tend to get excited about Christmas in October. Okay. Secretly. I don't tell people about it, but in my brain I get excited. I'm a DL. It is. And I begin my knitmas list, and I usually have a list um, of people who will definitely, definitely get something hand-knit. They usually get something every year, and they're the type of people that will wear it. And I see them wearing it, so I feel good about... It's more fulfilling that way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then I have a three-strike rule. So if I do give somebody knitwear yes. three times and I do not see it worn and in one case I see it shoved away somewhere, mm -hmm. I won't say who that was, it was my mom, um, I do not knit for them anymore. Okay. Ever. It's like you're out. You're out. After blacklist. Like yes. forbidden. Forbidden knitting. Yep. Nothing. So, but usually people are really good and I... I think through like something I know that that person will wear in a color that they will like. Yeah. Um, do you ever ask them or consult with them? I do. So I have about five people that are my core um, gift recipients. They get something every year. So I usually will ask them like, what colors are you wanting? What kind of thing are you wanting? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I'll give them my Ravelry and they'll go and favorite stuff for me. Nice. It's, it's worked really well in the past, doing it that way. Um, and, let's see. So they always get something. And then I have a maybe list. Uh -huh. And then typically, like, the two to three weeks prior to Christmas, I'll add a bunch of people at the last second. Yeah. Like, people that I was kind of getting to know, wasn't sure if I was going to give them something. Yeah. And then decide to give them something. Okay. And knit at the last minute. Yeah. Now, is the maybe list more about relationships or more about how much time you have? It's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Um, they are typically people who will start out on the list and perhaps I don't know exactly what to knit for them or I'm still thinking through other non-knitted items that they might want or desire more. Mm -hmm. um, they usually do tend to get 
knitwear, mm -hmm. but it will be like further down the road. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I first, I tend to first knit for my core people and for gifts that I need to ship. Mm, yeah. So I have that has to get done earlier. Yes. One of my closest friends is in Germany, and she always, always, always gets a garment. Mm -hmm. So I have to like get that ready early and then send it early so yeah. that she gets it. So when they when these people have to prove to you that they're appreciating it and wearing <laughs> it, what is the criteria for that? Because if you're not with them, right, right. Um, so this will be the first year that I'm not at home with these people. Mm -hmm. So you're exactly right. I don't really know. Um, but a lot of it also has to do with when I give the gift, I can usually see like the gratitude mm. for someone who actually appreciates like what goes into knitting something yeah. 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 Um, and the time and appreciate that a hand knit sweater shouldn't cost $30. It's right. like triple that for yeah. just the yarn. Yeah. Um, so I, I base it off of that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And this year, my list is significantly smaller mm -hmm. than last year. I think I have 18 or 19 people right well, now. Well, you're 23 years old, and if people get three strikes, I mean, we're at the point now where people are blacklisted. <laughs> so I can understand why the list is smaller. I mean, there's only so much time. You know? and, and I'm, you know, in grad school. I'm working yeah. almost full time, so I'm trying to be realistic. I am knitting three sweaters this year, so... There's that. That kind of makes up for some of the smaller gifts. Yeah. Now, do you pull from your stash, or do you always, when you're making your knit miss list, are you like, I need to buy this, I need to buy this, I need to buy this? Like, mm -hmm. is there a combination? That is also a really good question. Thank you. I'm getting good at this. <laughs> it's like my seventh interview. <laughs> um, I tend to, I tend to buy yarn for specific projects if I know I don't have it in my stash, mm -hmm. and. Um, this doesn't sound nice, but for the for the projects that I privilege more, mm -hmm. so like for people that I really am excited to knit for them yeah. and I treasure our friendship or relationship to a higher degree, I will tend to buy specifically for that. Yeah. Um, smaller gifts, like I'll knit sometimes for my professors yeah. or for further members of the family. Those I'll tend to pull from stash. Yeah. Um, or if it's like a last minute thing, I'll tend to pull from stash. Mm -hmm. But typically, I'm. I would say it's a. It's an even split of mm -hmm. buying yarn for specific projects and pulling from stash. Do you have a huge stash? I do. I only have about a fourth of it here. The rest is what the, at the your parents' house. Yes. Do you? Um, do you impulse buy like me? Like when I go sh when I go traveling, I'll seek out a yarn shop and mm -hmm. then I'll just buy a skein, of, just like one skein of something that I like. When I that? when I travel, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my souvenir thing. I will either get a tattoo if I can make that happen. Whoa! Or I will get yarn. Again, she's only twenty three, so she's got lots of space left. Yeah, we're we're working on it. So you'll get a tattoo for on a trip. Uh, five of these are from trips. Wow. Yeah. What's your favorite tattoo? That's a hard question. How many do you have? I have ten. So I can only see four right now. There are nine on my arms and then one on my side. Okay. Um, this is Snow White. Look at Snow White! She's Wait, where's your knitting favorite. tattoo? My sheep? Oh, there it is. I knew you had to have one. Yes. Nice. It almost looked like she's holding needles for So she her is. Too. This um, is my nerdiest tattoo. This is Jane Austen <laughs> knitting with her quills. Yes! It is so dorky. Did you design that yourself? No, it was actually in the Jane Austen Knits um, pattern magazine. Something similar to it, and then we kind of altered it a little bit, but I was like, I want that. I was also 18. Yeah. But I still love her. I've seen the coolest knit, like, balls of yarn. Yes. Like, at Vogue Knitting Live and stuff. Will you go to Vogue Knitting Live? I'm thinking about it. I did Rhinebeck. Yeah, was that your first time? That was my first time. Oh yeah, time. tell me about your first time at Rhinebeck! Oh I, okay. It was so magical. It was... It was unlike anything else. I compare Rhinebeck yeah. to Disneyland for knitters. Yeah. And I will tell you why. So there are long lines to everything. Yeah. And you wait in line, but it's still fun because you're with people who are also excited. Mm -hmm. um, meeting 
Nitterati, like knit celebrities, is like meeting characters at Disneyland. Oh, good so, one. So like when- They need Wranglers, like the Disneyland. Yeah, ones. exactly. Like Stephen West yeah. kind of needs his little posse <laughs> to protect him from people. He is so tall. He is so tall. And I am short, so. <laughs> no, Did but my, what I mean is, he, you can see him so easily in the crowd. And he's usually very colorful. But you guys have some good Instagram stuff. So how'd that go down? Um, so I knew Stephen West prior to Ryan Beck. You did? I did. Um, I've met him a couple times in strange coincident situations where I would go to a yarn shop and he would be there. That is strange. This has happened since I was 18 in Amsterdam. I went to, um, what what is now Steven in Penelope's mm -hmm. was just Penelope's mm -hmm. and he was sitting on the couch knitting I like maybe cried and said I love you which I was little he's okay to it. he was awkward but cute about it <laughs> um but then the main time is that he came to stash and did like a whole kind of like two-day um teacher sort of thing with Steven B uh -huh. as well yeah, they do stuff too right? yes um, so I got to know him pretty well through that because we were there the whole time. And then I've ran into him a couple different times and he's come into Pearl, mm -hmm. Soho as well. And that's where you work now. That's where I work now. Mm -hmm. And so I, so we knew each other enough that I could ask him if he would take a photo skipping with me, which is that photo on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. it's like, he was cool with it. He was, to he was like, oh yeah, sure. Let me just get my donut. <laughs> that's funny. It was... It was magical. Yeah. And um, just back to Ryan Beck and Daniel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to go back to Ryan Beck. Yes. Um, but I, I love that, I love your comparison of the Nidorati, like the characters with. Yes. That's so funny. It really is because you like, you, it's, you're in these huge crowds of people, but then you spot a like someone that you have seen their face before. Um, and I've gone to knitting festivals in the past, smaller, definitely smaller than Ryan Beck, but Ryan Beck is like, the mother of all festivals. I call them Mecca and Medina. It is, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, and I met Isolde de Teague, which I have wanted to do for over six years. I've heard of her. I read about her, I think, in the Claire Parks in Atlanta. Yeah. Yes. So she was there? She was there. She is, she's a huge like knitwear designer mm -hmm. and um, she's been my favorite designer for so long. And it was... Did you just run into her or were you so, looking for her? <laughs> So she came up to me, which then made me freak out. Um, I was actually with Pamela Wynn, who's also a knitwear designer, and we were in line getting pretzels. And I felt this tap on my shoulder, and I turn around, and Isolde Teague is right here in my face, and I just go, ha! Ah! And then you knew what she looked like. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. And then I couldn't breathe as she was talking to me. And then we got a picture, and then I still couldn't breathe, and then she left, and then I cried. <laughs> And that was it. Like, why did she tap you? Because she liked what she, you were wearing. Well, she knew me from Instagram. Oh. So we've been like, I, we've been Ravelry friends, but that's yeah. not really. It's hard really to mean too much. Yeah. yeah. Um, but on Instagram, we have followed each other for a while. I did not think she knew that I existed. Apparently, she did, and it was so much. Fun. That's so cool. <laughs> was that kind of the the moment? The moment. French, Ryan Beck, Our if pictures. Had, if you could only talk about any moment, like it was that, that would one. be that would be it. I have our photo is like my phone background right now. What did you buy at Rhinebeck? Um, so I told myself that I would buy a sweater quantity, a bolero quantity, a couple gift skeins, and then like three or four wild card skeins. I ended up I love how you plan your life. <laughs> do you do you notice? I like to plan her? things. Like she goes with the plan. I love this. This is so good. Okay, so did you follow the plan? I did not. Um, <laughs> I got four sweater quantities. No. But okay, hear me out. Where'd you put it all? I mean, it's, did you? It's did hiding you, in there. Did you go back to the car? I mean, did no. You? Well, I was there for two days. But I mean, were you were you carrying this around with you? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I yeah. It's it's cool. It's cool. I have a big tote bag. I come prepared. I've seen some huge. Ones. Yeah. Yeah, people. Okay, so you yes. got four sweat. Okay, and I did. I but it was over the course of Indie Untangled, yeah. Ride Back, Ride Back. Okay, cool. So it wasn't all like one big yeah. purchase. <gasps> but some of them, in my defense, were <laughs> on sale yeah. or um, I usually, like for my sweaters, I don't need too much yarn because I knit them very cropped yeah. and very fitted. Mm -hmm. So for worsted weight, I can get away with like 800 yards yeah. and get a sweater. Um, 
So that's my defense. I'm sticking to that. And I'm stocking up. Yeah. Until next year. Yeah. Projects. Yeah. You, it's, it yeah. only happens once a year. Exactly. So you have to stock up. Yeah. And it was my first time. I didn't yeah. spend a thousand dollars and I was really proud yeah. of that. Yeah, that's good. I did go over budget, but that's yeah, okay. I did too. It happens. I actually didn't buy as much this time because I was focused on my video. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater. And I saw you there, so I already knew who you were too. Isn't that funny? Yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. look at her with the sign. Yeah. We were going to go find you too. Yeah. Well, it was, I got tired. Yeah. I just got tired. Like, I needed to take breaks. And it was also only certain places were audio friendly. Mm. So I'd find myself somewhere and go, this is not working, like by the auctioneer. Yeah. Like, like, it's very accurate. Not working. Yeah. And then when I went to the meetup, it was, um, oh, what was the sound? I feel like it was maybe the the flute, the flutes. The pan flutes. Yeah, the pan flutes. The were, epic pan flutes. Yeah, were really carrying. Yes. And just the white, the crowd noise was just mm -hmm. too much. Mm -hmm. So I left there, and then I got tired, and then I also wanted to do some shopping. You know, I yeah, I didn't even remember totally what I bought. Enjoyed your time there. Too. Yeah, but I actually really enjoyed making the video, and I'm gonna Good. do it again next year. Good. For sure. Like, Good. and I think people like oh, it's almost up to seven thousand views. Like, people are gonna be looking for me. So it's going to yeah. be a totally different experience next year yeah. because of who's, who, have seen, who mm -hmm. has seen it. Do you want to show us any of your stash? Sure. This is my spirit animal. She is the best. She is. It's such a good picture of She's her. She's my queen. And then Steve Buscemi is above the door. Oh my gosh, you're so good. Look, we're doing now. We're doing a bedroom tour, guys. It's ha it's <laughs> happening. Look, the Nitmus is happening. Nitmus is already here. <laughs> I put that up at twelve thirty at night. Oh my gosh, your spirit animal is Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews is my queen. She is my queen forever and ever. It is the number one thing on my bucket list to meet Julie Andrews. And I have definitely looked at like her website and events and things like that where I could try to meet her. I've had daydreams of her coming into Pearl Soho and me fainting. <gasps> That'd I don't be know so if good. she knits, but yeah. <laughs> I would knit for her. Let's make it happen. Um, okay, let's look at your yarn. Yes. So this is the bulk of my stash that's here. Mm -hmm. um, so not including this. And not including this, this is, oh, and not that, sorry. But this is all Rhinebeck. Okay. So I, it's mostly in one area. Mm -hmm. um, this is that. Skeiny Dipping, which oh, is an Indian tangle. Mm -hmm. I saw them. They had such cool look. They had beautiful yarn. Yeah. I can't wait to buy from them again. Um, this is Backyard Fiber Works, I believe mm -hmm. is their name. They also were one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Totally recommend checking them out. Um, the obligatory Miss Babs. Yeah, I didn't. Like, I, I can't get into her. Why can't I get into her? Is it because of the line? The line is ridiculous. I did not get this until the last, like, two hours of the last day. Mm -hmm. And I actually had no line at all. Um, I mean, but it is a nice color. You found a good one. It is. Her yarn is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think what a lot of people have said to me who don't buy from her mm -hmm. is that they can buy from her online. Mm. So what's like, it's good to go there and see colors, but, but then just go get you might online. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's a lot of it. I have a tiny bit in here. Look at this sparkly orange, but that's Isn't not that my book. Yeah. This is, Oh, did you get this? Yes. Are you going to dye this or are you going to do this? So this is what I call my Clara Park sweater mm -hmm. because it's from this very small farm. Um, and it's all from their sheep, mm -hmm. natural, undyed, a little wooly. So yeah. I want to keep it like that yeah. and just do something really cozy. Yeah. That's going to be nice. This is yeah. nice wool. Yeah. Why do you call it a Clara Parks sweater for those who don't know who so, she is or what she's about? So Clara Parks is an author and she does knitters review. Um, hopefully someday she'll be my best friend. We're working on it, <laughs> working on it. Um, but she... One thing that I love about Clara is that she emphasizes um, like where the wool comes from. So not just that, oh, we're going to go to the store and buy a bunch of merino. No, let's like see the whole process. Let's meet the farmers. Let's meet the sheep, see how it gets milled, um, see how it gets dyed or processed, any of those things, and then appreciate like a single skein for what it is and the whole like trajectory of it. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I love about everything in my life. Like I love that about clothing and yarn, um, just to like see the journey of how that has come into my possession. Mm -hmm. So this cool. just, and she likes natural, like yeah. natural 
undyed stuff. So. I could see this being cable. Yeah, like an Aran, like mm -hmm. super cable-y. Yeah. Or I like your pom-poms. You could be pom-poms too. Yeah. Do we call these pom-poms? Bobbles. Bobbles. I meant bobbles. Um, do you want to tell me anything else about your stash here? Um, let's see if there's most anything standing of these. out. It's so organized. This is my hand spun. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have a spinning wheel, and I love to spin, especially in the summertime. I don't have it here, which is rather unfortunate, but. I hope that I can keep spinning later. I feel like I'm drawn to things like this all the time. Yes. Like this colorway and stuff like this. Yes, so that's what's hard because I'm not going to knit anything vintage from that. No, right? no. But I love it. Do um, you knit socks? I do. Yeah, so that's I need kind to of do where, socks. That's, that's where I get away with using the super crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, and you can give those if you don't yeah, want to. Yeah, exactly. We can find you on Ravelry. Yes. Tell, say it, and then I'll also type it down below. Okay. So say all the places we can find you. So I am on Ravelry and Instagram. The, um, that's where I primarily am. And I think I'm more up to date with my knitting and life with Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very, very, very connected to my Instagram yeah. and my friends on there. So I'm there a lot. I love and Instagram. I know. It's so fun. Mm -hmm. um, so you can find me as Squidney Knits. So like squid, N-E-Y-K-N-I-T-S. And why did you choose Squidney? Well, my name is Sydney, right? And I think one day in high school, someone called me Squid or Squidney. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I like that. Yeah, it just stuck. And it just stuck. I've had that. That's been my handle since I was 18. Yeah. So. so when I was in middle school and they called me Krusty. <laughs> That, Christy knits. That didn't stick. No. <laughs> I can see that. Okay, but Squidney super cute. And by the way, have you seen the octopus? Yes. I know it's not a squid. Yes. But it's but that is, it's on my someday list. Yeah, that's a sweater. I might have to make that too. Might yeah, I had a coworker make it. And Ravelry's also Squidney. Also Squidney okay. knits. Um that will have a lot of my like older projects. My old roommate is a photographer, so he used to take really lovely photos of my hand knits. Mm -hmm. I do not have that luxury anymore, but I try to keep it up to date. So. Yeah. I just want to know, I, it would be cool if we did a knitmas video. <gasps> yes. I mean, could you show all the knitmas things? Like, that I've ever made no, or I mean, that like I'm working on? this season. On. Like, if I came back, if, I know see. you have to ship some of them. So if you could wait until like very close to Christmas yeah. to post the video. Of course. Because, well, no, I post because, it after. Okay. Because then we don't yes. want to ruin any surprises. Exactly. Because I'm also knitting for Christmas this year more than I ever have. Go and ahead. I'm, it's, I'm dying to like hint about it or talk about it, but, yes. you, but can't. you can't. No. So would it, would, you'd have to wait until after Christmas. Or even just really close to, yeah. Yeah. But we, if we could, if we could have a show and tell. Yes. Of Knitmas. That would be fun. Don't you think that would be awesome? Yeah. Okay, like, we're going to tap happening. right now and we're doing that. Because I could just come... Let's end this is not spitting. Yeah, I don't have spitting. any nails on. I'm going to do. But yeah, <laughs> like, I think we should do that and then we can see what you did for Nitin. Yes. I love this idea. Awesome. Okay, good. Until then, we are signing off. <laughs>